Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back into the channel. I'm your host, Jeff Corradetti, and today we're gonna to be talking about what you should be carrying as a minimum on your ATV or your UTV. So let's stay tuned to find out what they are. Well, everybody, you got yourself an ATV or a side-by-side -side and you're ready to hit the trails. What we want to do in this episode is talk a little bit about the essential kits. Before you throw your helmet on, strap your boots on, load it on your trailer in the back of your truck and hit the trails with your buddies, or even if it's for work purposes, there are certain things you might want to consider carrying. This is my personal preference of a recommendation on what should you carry when you are going off-road. Now this kit is called the Essential Kit and it's basically the basic kit that you should be carrying with you if you're only going for a few hours, a day, or less. Anything more than that you might want to kind of recognize that you need to carry more equipment, more advanced riding skill may be also necessary, and some PPE increased uh, protection might be necessary. But this kit here is just what you should be packing with you at all times on all trips. So I'm going to go over what those are and why I recommend them to you. So it's not a big kit. Now I've got this Argo uh, XR500, which is Argo's entry level quad. I upgraded to a single uh, winch in the front because I think that's an essential tool that you should all off-highway vehicles should be carrying. If you don't have a winch or you do not have uh, an operable winch or nothing's available, I would also look at carrying what's called a come along. So those are things that we would want to recognize. So some extraction equipment is highly recommended and no, uh, and there's no way that I would go out without a basic winch. So the Argo is equipped with a 2,500 pound synthetic rope Kimpex winch and it fit wonderfully on the uh, Argo XR500. So this vehicle is complete to go. Now what we're not going to cover in this course or this episode today is the inspection process on when we should go out. Now a lot of problems and a lot of conflict can be resolved prior to leaving the garage or your shop to go out on a trail ride. So a proper inspection of your equipment and your vehicle to make sure it's in proper riding order will allow us to eliminate a lot of unnecessary equipment in case we do run into problems. So maintenance is the key and that's the first thing that you kind of want to make sure that you're carrying with you is your owner's manuals. Now I have two owner's manuals here, one for the ATV and one for the uh, winch that is it equipped with. These will spell out operational requirements, maintenance requirements and specifications. So at all times when you're out in the bush, you wanna maybe be able to refer to the uh, manuals to have any you know, conflict resolutions and just a quick reference guide if you are needing parts or chemicals. So I always recommend at all times carrying the, the manuals with you on it and that includes the side-by-side -side as well. I have the Argo ATV and side-by-side um, manuals here along with the winches. So guys, moving on from the owner's manual, you'll also want to carry a first aid kit. And the first aid kit you can carry with you, they sell them in compact waterproof containers, even in a small little compact uh, first aid kit, such as the ATV version can fit handily under the seat of the Argo XR500. Of course, some ATVs do have generous spaces where you can increase the size and capacity of your uh, first aid kit and add more content. But again, part of an essential kit, slips, trips, cuts do happen, especially if we're out in the bush and it's good to have something that can bandage us up until we get home to get further medical care or just help us with the ouchy boo-boos that you know do happen. The other thing that we can get into entanglements in the bush is if we misjudge something or we break some of our plastics or anything else on the vehicle, always having uh, some set of tie wraps, uh, vinyl tie wraps is a good 
small backup plan. It can repair everything from a simple CV, crack CV boot to some plastics that may be dangling that we can kind of uh, mount in place until we get to the dealership to replace whatever we broke. The other thing we want to look at is recovery equipment. Now, my basic essentials should just include the winch. You've got a winch, you can get out, have a proper anchor point. But if your vehicle does have some generous cargo space like this Argo XR500, you can carry a small uh, toe strap. This will help you get to a better reach and can also serve as a tree saver, a tree trunk saver, so we don't put our cable or our uh, line through it and do any damage to the natural environment. So if you have room and you can get a small uh, tie strap, or sorry, a toe strap or recovery strap, I would highly recommend that. Moving on, making sure you have the adequate anchor points is a very high safety consideration. The ATV winch in the front is an appropriate anchor point. The winch will allow you to pull on itself and to recover out of a hole. However, if you need to be pulled from the back, if you're the one that's stuck and you can't go any forward and you don't have a snatch block to do a, a situational pull, what you can do is you can opt for one of these. They're a D shackle that fits in the receiver and this can serve more than a suitable anchor point for your vehicle if it's stuck or for towing somebody else out of a mud hole. Going forward, we'll talk a little bit about your keys. Now this key here is, you're usually gonna only have one, but I always recommend it to be on a floaty or something that's high vis. People do take things out of the ignition. You can drop it, you can get into water situations. This thing will allow it to float and it won't sink if you're in water. And again, if you do drop it, it is more visible on the ground. I recommend a blue colored floaty or a high vis floaty. Blue doesn't have any natural colors in the, uh, on, in the ground. And so that's something that might uh, stick out a little bit more for a visual reference. So make sure it's a decent sized floaty, again, to help you not drown or lose your key. Or if you do, it won't be lost for very long. Moving on to now the tires. Now, when we talk about an essential kit, we talk about, you know, what, what happened the most, what you can expect to happen. Well, flat tires is a reality, especially when we talk about going overland and the type of terrain that we're driving on could very easily cut up a tire. We could run over an obstacle that we misjudge and getting a flat tire is something that is a reality. So I would recommend going down to your local parts store, ATV store, favorite retailer, online retailer, Canadian Tire. These can be had very easily across the country and get yourself a basic tire repair kit. With a bit of practice, you can get back on the trail, plug the hole, and you can continue riding on your day. These are very compact, again, very easy to fit inside your Argo ATV. Beyond that, you're gonna to wanna to fill it back up with the required and recommended air pressure. Again, you can buy very compact, small air compressors that fit in a lot of smaller compartments on ATVs, not so much on UTVs, where they have a lot more generous cargo space. But we wanna make sure that we have the proper air pressure once we replace the, uh, once we plug the hole and we're ready to get going. Again, these ones will be 12 volt adapter, which most ATVs have them, and a few minutes and you're on your way. So again, part of your essential is your air pressure and your tire plug kit. It's something that even you inspect it in your garage, it's a high risk out in the environment. Moving on from there, we're going to talk a little bit about the tools. Most manufacturers, Argo included, gives you a generous amount of tools to carry on your ATV or your UTV. This will help you change a spark plug if you drown your engine, do basic maintenance. Uh, it even helps you check the tire pressure. So always carry what the manufacturer has equipped with you with the tool kit at all times. Read a reference your owner's manual and practice to do a few little small tips and tricks in the garage before heading out on the trail to give you some practice on how to use it on how to use the uh, tools. Going on this one as well, a nice little pocket knife or a cutter again can help you um, take any uh, debris that may be out there. This one's a bit stuck. 
So if you have a pocket knife, this will help cut some branches or anything that got twisted in the drive shaft angles, maybe help you clear some of the bushes out. Or if you need to start a uh, fire for a campfire, or whatever, you have that as a option. Also, if you're in a regulated area for license insurance, if you're on public lands, most provinces and some territories do have legislation behind license insurance and registration. Not so much on the licensing portion, but certainly on registration and insurance. So make sure you carry your documentation as required by law in your local area. And lastly in this is something very important that we're seeing a lot of problems these days is wildland fires. Here in Canada, we live in a boreal forest, especially here in Northern Alberta, Northwest Territories. These forests are becoming increasingly dry to the, uh, to the precipitation becoming less pronounced. And with the higher temperatures, overland fires, forest fires are becoming an unfortunate reality with today's uh, overland riding. So whether the machine is susceptible to fires or the activities that we create, or it's just a high risk environment, carrying a fire suppression system on your ATV or your UTV will help you mitigate any early fires. I use an ABC fire. It's good for chemicals. It's good for electrical. It's good for wood. This is a uh, five pound extinguisher. You can increase the size. This one here will put out most fires easily mounted to an ATV on the front or rear racks and you're ready to go. So that's basically my recommendations on a basic kit, what you should carry. This does not include the PPE that you should be wearing or the type of backpack and what your personal kit would be. This would just be what should be on the machine at all times. So once we go over there, I show you that this table is quite a bit full. We're going to throw everything on the Argo XR500 and show you how this all fits in nice and compact, but it doesn't bulk up the machine. Well, everybody, here we are. We got the XR500, and again, it's an entry-level ATV. This one doesn't have any really exterior storage. It's all under the seat, but it's more than adequate to fit everything underneath the table, very compact. So it won't bounce loose. You won't lose it on a trail. It'll stay nice, clean, and dry, and it'll be great for when you need to access it. So let's go take the seat off and see all the room that you have. Well, everybody, here we go. We've got the Argo XR500 in position. I'm going to show you how I put everything together, starting with the fire extinguisher. We are going to have this guy here just mounted right here on the back. It's going to be in its factory uh, holding. Uh, now, again, make sure that everything is anchored down properly. This one here has been tested and has no ill effects out on the trail. It's very stout. What I did for a little bit of a tip and trick because if you're splashing through the mud and everything to keep the opening here, I stuffed a earplug in there just to keep it as clear as possible. Now, the second one we're gonna do is we're gonna use the middle rack here. We're gonna take our insurance regulations and uh, all paperwork, just throw it in there like that. And over this, we're gonna be stuffing the uh, first aid kit in. So I'll show you how that works. You can just go in there. It's all band-aids in there and just a basic kit. And the green color matches nicely. Once the seat is over there, you will not notice any problems with it moving around. So that's where that center goes. When it comes into the owner's manual, we'll put that in last. But what I want to show you is I want to show you the um, benefit of using a cellophane bag here to keep everything nice and dry. I wouldn't use the box. They will get moist over time and then they will have problems with going in there. So I just put everything in a bag and I put these guys in a bag as well, along with the tools for replacing the, um, along with the tools for uh, doing the plug. So this way it's all one and done. And then I will show you, then I, what I do is I zip the bag up like this that'll remain nice and waterproof you might have to let some air out and then i just stuff the um, the compressor in there like that and then there's no ill effect in there so it's all nice and done also inside there will fit 
the toe strap and in a nice compartment. You can also put some other stuff in there as well. When it comes to the tie wraps, I put just everything in that compartment there. And again, along with the uh, utility knife. So with that, I put it back in its package, throw it over there. Again, you can even add more in if you do so choose. Now for the receiver, this one's just gonna go in the back of the receiver and it's gonna stay in there. I will not use this to anchor it down. I do that by the wheels, but this will always be anchored in the back. As you can see, it fits perfect and it's ready to go, keeping your vehicle a little bit more free. Now, lastly, the Argo XR. Now this is specific to this model. This does have a cover. Now, however, it does screw back on. So luckily that the tools that it comes with is able to perform this duty. But what you want to do is you want to put it on last. So you'd screw that in. And from there, you would take the last part of it, which is where the owner manuals will go and the tools fit nice and neat in here. again you just put this in here it's nice and dry it'll keep it clean and debris free and you can hit that up there nice and lock it up and then lastly with the tools fitting it in underneath the seat back to its factory component so so as you can see all the tools are back in its spot and we can just go in here close it all up lock it up and you're good to go. Well, everybody, that concludes my recommendations for the essential ATV and UTV kits. Fits perfectly, get you through most situations that you'd encounter on a light day of riding, and I'll let you be as prepared at the beginning. So guys, I will put a link to all the descriptions of everything that I carry in my ATV with the product numbers as much as possible down in the description below. And so if you want equipped with your machine with the same type of equipment that I have, it'll be all listed there. I'm in Canada, so many of this uh, products are available at Canadian Tire and across the major retailers and your local power sports store. So anyway, guys, next episode, we'll talk about what should we do to inspect it before we hit the trails. Then we'll talk about load, and then we'll be going into the bush to tear up some trails. Thanks for joining me. Hope you guys are doing good. Stay loose for now.